Hey everyone, my name is Kelly and I am a physical therapist and I specialize in oncology and lymphedema. In this video, I'm gonna go through a full routine for manual lymph drainage to address head and neck lymphedema. Your lymphatic system can help move the fluid out of the area and reduce toxins. It also plays a role in your immune function. When you've had lymph nodes removed for cancer surgery in your head and neck region or you've had radiation to the area, you can cause damage in a backed up system. That'll cause the lymphedema in the head and neck region. Unfortunately, when you have swelling in that area, it can be hard to swallow and to speak. For those of you who have head neck lymphedema, it's best to do your manual lymph drainage in the morning. When you've been laying flat all night, the fluid can move with gravity up towards your head neck area and make it worse. That's why sleeping can be more difficult for those of you who have that lymphedema and why some of you might prop yourselves up a little bit or use compression garments at night to help manage. When you do your manual lymph drainage in the morning, you can help reduce that swelling so that you can have better swallowing and speaking for the rest of your day. The goal of manual lymph drainage for head and neck lymphedema is to get the fluid moving out of the head and neck area and down towards another area like your armpit areas that have all your lymph nodes that can help get the system moving more freely and to help decrease the swelling in this area. So in doing your manual lymph drainage, a couple things you want to do. You want to try to use a flat hand and your whole palm or your, all your fingers, not just a couple fingers or your fingertips. You want to try to use as much surface area as possible against your skin to get the most benefit. It's best to do your manual lymph drainage sitting upright because gravity will help move the fluid down and out of that head and neck area. You don't want to do the lymphatic drainage in an area that is painful or if you have any brand new incision sites or scars that are not healing, you want to try to avoid that area so you don't pull open the skin. If you have any signs of infection, you want to hold on your manual lymph drainage and go talk to your doctor and get that addressed. If you have the time, it's best to do this routine each day in conjunction with your exercise and your compression if you're using it. Okay, so we're going to go through the full routine now. The first thing I do is start with belly breaths. You have a lot of lymph nodes in your belly, deep within your abdomen. We wanna make sure we're activating these to help with the system that may be backed up here. So what I do is we put your hands on your belly and you're gonna take about four to five deep breaths. Put pressure down with your hands into your belly. When you take a deep breath, I want you to try to feel your belly expand, but resist that expansion with your hands. So first deep breath in and let it go. And number two. And what I'm trying to do is try to move my hands around in different areas. So number three. And last one. Good. We want to try to think about the pathways of the lymphatic system. The head, neck, lymph, lymphatic system moves down and out. And you have lymph nodes in your armpits and a little bit around your collarbone area as well. So depending on where your lymph nodes are removed, you wanna to try to work away from that area. So in just in general, we're gonna start with both armpits. So those are typically healthy. You put your whole hand flat into the armpit area and you're just gonna do large circles. You don't have to push very hard, but large circles about eight to 10 times in either direction. But I always try to think about kind of down and away from that head and neck area. And we'll do both sides. And if you only have swelling on one side, you can still do both of them. And do about eight to 10 on the other side. Good. And then I'm gonna go up, my hair out of the way, we're gonna go up to around the collarbone area. So you have lymph nodes around, especially right above your collarbone at the base of the neck. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work right above that collarbone. You can use a little bit more of your fingertips in this area, depending on how your collarbone sit, if you need to get more into the crevices, or you can get the whole base, um, the whole hand at the base of the neck, doing large circles. I'm thinking about kind of down and away. You're stretching the skin and letting go. So I'm not pulling back up. I'm almost stretching down 
and, and coming up without pressure. So when I do it quickly, it just kind of looks like circles. I'm going to do 8 to 10 on one side and then 8 to 10 on the other side. So it's almost going away, stretching the skin and letting go. Stretch and let go. Okay, and then we're going to work our ways up the head. We, we don't want to start from the top down, we want to start from the bottom up because we're trying to clear the pathways before we get to the area that we might need to push out. If we're trying to start here, this area is still backed up, we're not going to move anywhere. So we're going to work our way up. And you can adjust this based on where your swelling is. So we're going to work our way up the neck. A lot of lymph nodes are on either side of your ear and down alongside the neck. They work their way almost back and down. And so I'm going to do the same thing. So usually what I do is I have people take their fingers and open up almost like Spock fingers and go on either side of your ear. And then I'm trying to just massage around the ear down and away from that area. Do eight to 10 over on this side. And you can do all in one side first and then the other. I tend to just do both sides at the same time. And then I'm going to go do the other side working around that ear down and away. Okay. And then for a lot of people, they get swelling right underneath their jaw area, under their mandible area. So what I'll do is I'll start to work under the jaw and work down and away in that same direction. And you have to be very gentle in this area. You don't have to push hard at all. It is light on the skin. The lymphatics run right under the skin, so you don't want to press hard for that reason, but also because you have a lot of delicate structures in this area. And we don't want to put any compression too hard on them and cause damage. On the other side, And you can kind of feel on your fingertips to work kind of underneath the jaw a little bit and working down and out. If you have a little more swelling in the front, you're welcome to do a little bit more in the front areas. You don't need to do two at the same time and push inwards. I usually just do a little bit in the front or just one at a time. And you can even work right under the chin and kind of down and away in each side. Good, and then you can kind of work that rest of the way down. Some people will also have swelling in the back. So when I'm feeling the back of my head, I'm going to about my hairline and I'm going down and, and back in the back of the neck. Okay, and then when we come to the head part, some people only have swelling down here and they can continue to work in that area and then work your way down and be done. But a lot of people also have swelling into their face, into their cheeks, into their mouth, or around their eyes even. And so what we wanna do is think about a line down the middle of your head, okay? And everything we do is we're gonna work out and down to the sides all the way up. Okay, so if you work around the mouth, around the chin, you're down and out to the sides. Get the fluid moving out and down, okay? So you will have a little bit more working your fingertips in this area, and that's okay. I'm gonna work above. And you can do your lips specifically too. So we will get swelling around there. And for some, they'll have swelling a little more or more issues inside of their mouth. And typically it's nice to make sure your hands are washed well, or if you have a glove or something clean before you do that. But you can use your thumb or your finger inside and, and massage the inside of your mouth as well, okay? Because I don't have gloves with me, I'm gonna skip that part, but feel free to do that. Just make sure that your hands are clean, okay? And then you can work kind of around, around the nose and the eyes. 
working your way down and out. Okay, and then around the eyes. Again, still being really gentle. Some people will even see some around the eyelid areas. Just be very, very gentle. You don't wanna to push too hard around the eyes. And then same thing with the forehead. And then what I'll do is I'll spend a little more time on the outsides or kind of come through and do a little bit of a tune up as you go away and down. But you can spend as much time on the areas that are a little more stubborn for you. So if you have swelling a lot around the mouth or around the neck and that's most of it, maybe you spend more time. Maybe you don't just do eight to 10 strokes, but you spend and do 20 or 30 strokes in that area or a couple minutes in that area. That is just fine. Okay, and make sure you get it around in the front of the ears and behind the ears. There are lymph nodes in that area that all of these drain towards. Okay, so we've made our way up, so then we're gonna almost go backwards and make our way back down. So everything that we started with, we're gonna clean out. So I'm working around the ears. And I'm gonna come back around the jaw area, or on the neck, and work underneath. And again, down and away, down and away. This is probably the area that I see most commonly is right under the neck. And so I'll spend a little extra time there. If you had radiation and you have fibrosis in the area, you can spend a little more time doing some scar tissue release or fibrotic tissue release or myofascial release or getting your lymphedema provider, lymphedema therapist to assist you with that. So you want to still want to be a little bit careful with that area. And then I'm going to come back around on either side of the ear with my fingers working down and out. And also not forgetting the back of the neck as well. When you get back down to the base of the neck, we're gonna try to get this fluid moving towards your armpit areas, because those are healthy lymph nodes that you have not, well typically have not been touched for your surgery. For some of you, it may have been. But around your clavicles, around your color bone areas, they also have lymph nodes. Okay, so if you have lymphedema only on one side, it'd be nice to try to get some of that fluid just moving to the healthy side. But again, it's not wrong to do both sides. So then I'm gonna go back down to the base of the neck and around the collarbone or the clavicle area and down and away and into the chest area. So you do have lymph nodes a little bit lower too, but the bulk of them are your head, neck, armpits, abdomen area and then your groin area so trying to get a more out and down to the armpits from the base of the neck it is best to do directly on skin if you have the ability to and then moving all the way out to your armpits from the lower chest you can do that on both sides so when you've gone through all of them, all the way up towards your head, all the way down, you've spent more time on the areas that are a little more stubborn for you. We wanna finish with a few more circles in the armpits. So full hand in the armpit, doing large circles. Again, you're just stimulating the lymph nodes in there to help pick up their speed or do a little bit extra work if we can. So circles there. Okay, and then circles in the other one. Okay, and then we wanna go back down and finish with four more belly breaths. So putting your hand on your abdomen, pushing inward, taking a breath, feeling resistance, and let it go. Breathe in, especially through your nose. 
and out. Number three. And one more. And that's it. So I hope you found that helpful. If you have the time, it's best to do this every day, especially in the morning like we talked about before. But use this in conjunction with your exercise and with your compression garments. If you have any other topics that you'd like to see covered, feel free to comment those below and push the like button if you found this video helpful. Thanks everyone.